Hi, this is Dan Devlin for the Detective Dan Devlin Show, Honorable People, Honorable Nation. Uh, today our program is going to ask the question, is your health a fundamental human right? We have a guest today, Mr. Buck Williams, and we're going to be talking about a situation that he has uh, with his son, Tommy. This issue centers around the new law in New York State that allows people to purchase what's referred to as medical marijuana. The mere fact that they address it as marijuana, and maybe they should change that, lots of people get bent out of shape thinking that uh, individuals are just trying to use drugs in order to get the normal high that's associated with certain drug use. But I've had an opportunity to talk to Buck at some length, and today you're going to find out about the situation that he has and the outrageous prices that are now going to be charged for this now legal drug for people who need it in New York State. Buck, welcome. Thanks, Dan. Buck will just explain. Why don't you just give us a, a foundation of where you're at? Uh, well, my son was born healthy and normal, and at, when he was four months old, he got his DTAP shot, and he had a bad reaction to it. Uh, two days after this, the, he had the shot, he started having these terrible seizures, and they just uh, progressed to get worse and worse and worse. And he was diagnosed at that time with infantile spasms. And as you get older, that uh, advances into what they call lennox gastaut syndrome, or LGS. It's the severest form of epilepsy there is. And uh, my son was having over 100 seizures a day, easily. And, uh, you know, they would last different lengths, sometimes 10 minutes each, sometimes less. You don't know what they're going to be. And now today, he's still suffering from it. But uh, through pharmaceuticals, it's gotten back a little bit better, but not to where it should be. And all around the country, um, I, kn I know some of the people personally, kids with the same age as my son, and they're having unbelievable results. Kids that can never walk or talk, uh, they take this oil and they start doing both, and there's no more seizures. Um, there's an 85% success rate. So it doesn't mean it's, everyone's going to be cured or everyone's going to start to walk or talk. And my son, uh, they feel, has permanent brain damage by this time now. So, but they said it will, they believe it will immensely help his quality of life. It'll help lots of kids' quality of life, and they might actually be able to someday, uh, he might be able to walk or talk, we don't know. We, we just, uh, just now got passed. But now, after two years of litigation and trying to get it passed, and they finally got it available at the dispensaries, there was a shortage of it, so we had to drive to Johnson City because it's not ready in any of the dispensaries here, and it's four hours each way. And then when my wife got there, we were floored by what they said the price was going to be. I mean, he said they start you out slowly and then keep increasing it until he's up to what's considered a full dosage for his weight. And the pharmacist told my wife when he's at full dosage, dosage <laughs> we should plan on uh, two, oh, around $2,000 a month out of pocket. Is, it, is that covered by insurance? No, no insurance, no Medicaid, no nothing. And uh, the Department of Health sets the prices on this. That's unprecedented precedented too because... Uh, Never before has uh, an agency like that, a state agency, set the price on something. Um, myself, I think it should be open to uh, the market. But under the current laws, and uh, there's only five companies currently allowed to dispense it, and they can each only have five strains, which is kind of strange, too, because there's a lot of other strains out there that would work better. But the state is saying, no, you can only have these five. Now, Savino just submitted a bill, Senator Savino, to um, increase that, to have five more uh, strains available and five more companies to dispense it. So we're, it's very, very frustrating. We came all this way, uh, took a long time to get this far, and now when we think we can get it, nobody can afford it. Okay, let me ask you a couple of questions here. First of all, I want the audience to know, uh, you should know by now, hopefully you've been watching the program, but you know, we deal with fundamental human rights, and we believe that those rights are uh, really created by the fact that the vast majority, if not all people, would like to have these same rights. If it's the right to continue to exist, for example. In this case, we're talking about uh, the right 
to have good health. And so that's why we're doing this program. Whether it's this issue with medical marijuana or whether it's something else that's available that some bureaucrat is trying to control. And in this case, we're wondering whether the outrageous prices that are being charged for various quantities of this material, uh, what is it based upon? Uh, why is it so outrageously expensive here when, isn't it true, Buck, that in Colorado it's much less expensive? Much less expensive. It starts the same month supply for my son if I was in Colorado would run between 75 and 150 a month. Okay, so here it would be as much as $2,000. Correct. And if you could get it from Colorado, mm -hmm. it would be... As little as... little as $75 as a month. As little as $75 a month. Now, we've spoken about this a little bit, but you have a problem. You can't get it from Colorado, is that correct? No, you're not allowed to... Under state law, you're not allowed to bring it in from other states. It, the governor said it has to be grown here, produced here, uh, processed here, uh, and uh, inspected here, and distributed all in New York, even though none of the dispensaries are from New York. <laughs> And um, I know there's also a uh, synthetic available, which most of the parents don't want to use synthetic. There's a test going on right now at Women and Children's Hospital in Buffalo for the uh, synthetic. And, and most of the parents don't want something that's chemically made when you can give something natural. If it, if it wasn't for the state law, then you could acquire the same thing from Colorado at that $75 or $100 sure. somewhere in that area. Sure. Uh, and no. they, they, theirs is all inspected. It's all done in a laboratory. It's grown organically. There's no chemicals used, no uh, pesticides used. All of it is screened and uh, examined to make sure there's no bacteria, any type of mold, or anything that can hurt the kids uh, before it's processed. And it's tested as it goes along. And then when it's, the final product's done, it's retested to figure out the ratio of uh, CBD to THC. Now, isn't it true that some of this doesn't even have THC, which is the uh, more the hallucinogen or the euphoric, right? The uh, euphoric meat. value is taken right out of it. Uh, in most cases, the kids just need the CBD, which is basically hemp oil. I mean, I know some of it has been downgraded to hemp oil. But most of the kids for the severe seizures, such as my son, LGS, they recommend you have something with a little more THC in it. It controls the seizures much, much better. Um, other kids, maybe with Dravet or some other type of seizure disorder, another form of epilepsy, they've been having amazing results just using the CBD oil. But everybody's different. And uh, again, the decisions on this were all left up to politicians that know nothing about it, and all our medical experts were kind of left out of the equation. So they're very frustrated. Well. We really don't know each other well enough, and, and you probably don't know as much about this program, but you know, we try to be fair to everybody. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a little unfair to say the politicians don't know anything about it. Uh, they know. So, no, you'd be surprised. I went to Albany, and they knew pretty much absolutely nothing about well, it. Well, all I knew is marijuana bad. That's, <laughs> that's but, it, or cannabis, whatever you want to call you it. You know, folks, I, it's important for you to know that oftentimes when people are working on some issue, um, it, it seems like the other, or the opposition, I should say, uh, doesn't have a handle on what they're doing. And Buck and I spoke earlier, and I asked the questions, you know, is it possible that they really have some good reason for doing what they're doing? I can't think of how this, they could possibly expect these families who are not reimbursed by insurance to afford $2,000 a month so their child can have better health. Uh, and it appears to me as though we have some work to do here. And it's not the people that I'm going to be looking for that have these types of conditions or have a family member that has this type of condition that I want to appeal to. It's everybody who I believe want to have this fundamental human right to be able to have good health, and you don't want politicians 
for whatever reason they're doing it, to hinder you from having what you need. And certainly, if this is the kind of money that they're going to charge for this particular, I'll refer to it as a drug, uh, they're making it impossible for families really to take care of their loved ones. Now, you and I know, and we've been through this before on other issues, I'm willing to bet the politicians who are involved in making these decisions, if they had a child or a family member who needed this, you know, they would absolutely probably do anything, probably even acquire it illegally in order to make sure that their family member was helped. So, you know, these things are important for all of us to look at and to say, what are we going to do about it? And we're going to give you a telephone number of the governor's office. And after you hear what else we have to say about this, you make a decision as to what you want to do. But we encourage you, you know, to call the governor's office and let them know that you're outraged at the fact that these young people in particular uh, have to go through what they're going through. And in a second, I want to introduce you to Tommy. And we have a little clip. He's going through a seizure. And we'll be ready for that if you want to get that uh, up on the screen, uh, Scott. Uh, this is heartbreaking. And Tommy, if what Buck is saying Tommy, is true, and I Tommy, have no reason to believe here. that it's not true, to allow this to happen Thomas, when something okay, is available I'm gonna, I'm gonna that out. could keep him from going through Tommy, the seizure Tommy. and maybe get Tommy. him in a condition, as has happened with other people, where he could actually get out of his wheelchair and he could walk and talk, do the things that a normal child could do. You know, it's outrageous that our politicians are standing in the way of that. It, to be fair, it's not all for everybody be 2,000. For others, it might be 750 to 1,000. It varies on the quantity they need. They go by body weight for the most part. But uh, regardless if it's 750 or 2,000 a month, I mean, either way, most families are, have limited means and are living paycheck to paycheck right now. And in or, I know in, uh, some of my friends, a lot of them called up and said, well, we're going to have a fundraiser. We're going to get this money for you, and you're, Tommy's going to get his medicine. I don't want to do that. I don't think the answer is to give them what they want. The answer is to make it affordable for everybody and not have to do all these fundraisers. When how, You know, there was over a billion dollars made in Colorado last year on medical marijuana. And, um, well, maybe that's a combination of recreational, too, in Colorado. I'm not sure, but I know right. it's over a billion dollars. And... They're, if they're selling a little bottle like this, as you see here, for $75, and they're making millions, what does New York State have in mind? You know, that's a, a, an excellent question. Has anybody given you an answer to that? We don't have any answer at all. We don't know why there's only five strains available from each distributor, and when there's probably at least 20 or more of, that are available, like if you went to Colorado, that would help better than the strains they're producing here. So when you're talking about a strain, it would be from a particular plant? Particular plant. To there's different. Yes, and the, and the ratios, the different ratios. Okay. For example, if uh, I know there's a lot of uh, cancer patients who are in terrible pain, and this helps immensely for them, and they're going to have a much higher THC content because that kills the pain. Um, the kids don't need anywhere as near that amount. So, and the other big issue is finding a doctor to prescribe it because right now the doctors are all terrified to write scripts for it. They're, they're afraid to give too much, even though there's never been a fatality ever that anybody can point to for medical marijuana. Uh, they're afraid that the state's gonna come down and take their license away. So they're being really, really overcautious and a lot of them refuse to register. There's only a few hundred doctors and if you go to the Department of Health's website, the patients aren't allowed to see that list. That even though now New Jersey has it and they post all the doctors that are willing to prescribe it, but New York says it's a safety issue and I fail to see what the safety issue is. Uh, New Jersey's doing fine with it and the patients can find a doctor, but not New York. They got And well, one more last point before sure, I do, sure. is um, the, the governor's office was contacted and the governor made a statement that he thinks the program's going just great. He's very pleased. Yeah. That's so there's a problem right there. Right. 
Let me let me ask you about doctors. Uh, you do have a doctor that would be willing to receive it from Colorado, isn't that correct? Oh. And then dispense it? Yeah, that he, he suggested that a while ago, and he even wrote a letter to that effect. And he said that my, my son is considered terminal, and all these kids are considered terminal. And they're not understanding what the word terminal means. It but means they could die any day next week. I, I know three we're, kids we're personally. We're terminal. I, I went, yeah, but I went to three little kids' funerals already, and they're 10 years old, and then they're dying having these. You'll see the seizures if you show Tommy having one. Right. It's a horrible thing for them to go through, and there's no reason for it other than it appears to be pure greed. Yeah. Pure greed and, and a control thing. They want to have control of everything. If Colorado is willing to send the medicine from there to my doctor, and it doesn't even touch my hands until I get it prescribed from a registered neurologist, what's the problem? The problem is, well, New York doesn't get to make enough money of it. They could still add tax to it, but it wouldn't be enough tax. I, they want to make, everybody sees dollar signs. Let and, me address that. You know, taxing something that is necessary for someone to have better health is insanity. I, I know of no one. It's We're about the fundamentals. And I know of no one who would want something more expensive when it's crucial to their health. And I think everybody watching would agree with that. You know, when we discuss fundamental human rights or when we talk about honorable people and an honorable nation, it's not possible, you know, to have honorable people and certainly not possible to have an honorable nation if we're going to have an attitude where officials that we pay who are in position to serve us decide that they're going to tax something that uh, either if they have it, it would help them with better health, or if they can't afford it by, ver by reason of the fact that now there's tax dollars put onto it, which makes it more expensive. Uh, if we're going to put up with that from the people that we essentially have hired, you know, then we, the public, are the fools. Because we have control over this, you have control over this, and if you want to wait until it's your uh, child that is going through this, you know, who is going to fight for you then? I suggest that you do as we said, you call the governor's office, I would encourage you to write a simple letter and send it with a return receipt requested so we can document that you have sent this. You can reach us at either info or Dan at fundamentalhumanrights.org. You know, send me an email, let me know that you have gone to that link, that you've either called the governor's office or that you'd like to help in some way or that you sent a letter to the governor's office. You know, look at your uh, other legislators, ask them where they stand on this, insist that they give you answers to this. Uh, Buck, is there an organization that they could kind of connect with? Yeah, Compassionate Care. If you go to Compassionate Care organization online, just uh, if you Google Compassionate Care, it'll pop right up. And they are the ones that initially helped get this passed, and they're still in there fighting for it. And it's been going on for a long time. I know. They, they've been incredible, and they have uh, can answer just about any question you can throw at them. They know a great deal more than I do. Well, you mentioned that young people have died already because they haven't been able to, I've gone, to receive this. That's correct, and it's heartbreaking. I, uh, I, and I have nightmares about it I, all the time, and uh, all the other parents do also. They're just wondering, are, we're, we could be next, and... Our kids want to live as much as anybody else's kids, and they don't want to have, shouldn't have to be made to suffer like this or put a price tag on it. It's like extortion. It's like this is something that uh, the, the mafia would do, not a state that's supposed to be helping people suffering and representing us. They're, they're doing the opposite. Everybody's got dollar signs, and they're saying, oh, man, Colorado's making, I made a billion. We're going to make 10 billion, right? And 
their eyes are all lit up with greed right now and they're not seeing the bigger picture. Or if they do see it, they simply don't care because we begged the governor. I went to Albany and I made a DVD of my son seizing and all the other kids seizing and I passed it out to all the, the senators. I went down in, at a table in the, in the Senate and gave them all copies and they watched it. And a, a majority of the senators are for helping us. It's the people at the top that are making this happen. And putting us through this over and over and over again. We just think, finally, we're at the end of that tunnel, we're seeing some light, and now, bam, they, we find, they wouldn't tell us what it was going to cost. They, we called, everybody called to find out the price of what, so we had an idea because we knew we had to pay out of pocket. There's no insurance for it. And the dispensaries wouldn't tell us. And they wouldn't tell us till like, well, the day before. They said, well, it's going to be X number of cents per gram. Okay, then how much for my son? Well, it depends on how many grams and what quantity, what's the ratio to CBD to THC. So you come in and we'll let you know. And then you, you get there and you hand them your script and, oh, we're going to start them out. It'll be like 375 or 335 to start and then it'll go up to 750. And then when he's up to full dose, you better plan on about $2,000 a month, they told my wife. And she started she's in tears over well, this. She says, what are you talking about? This is insane. Well, I think that's the appropriate term. Uh, it's cruel. Other, other than the fact that insanity would kind of indicate that there's no uh, method to this madness. And I think your term, uh, using the term mafia, is probably uh, more appropriate. You know, when you have people who hold office and they believe that they can do what they want and not serve the people who are paying their bills... We've, and extort we've, money like this. Well, and extort it. Uh, I mean, they're, tell, they're saying, no, you can't go anyplace else to get it, even though it's a fraction of the price. Uh, you have to buy it here. You have to use one of the five strains we have, not one of the other ones that are, is better for your child out of state. This is what you're allowed to have. That's it. Take it or leave it. And, I mean, who does something like that? Well, I think you mentioned that the bureaucrats are really running this as opposed to the, the medical people. Is that yeah, that's correct. My neurologist, my son's neurologist, said that uh, he said he was afraid this would happen. He says yeah. everybody sees dollar signs and they're not looking at the medical value first, and and uh, and the ending of the suffering for cancer patients and it'll extend life. It creates, uh, it gives people an appetite with cancer and make them live a couple years more, maybe spend more time with their grandkids or and just a better quality of life instead of. It's a shame. It just doesn't make sense to me. You want. Go ahead. I, I, I want to make a point here because, you know, we have a limited amount of time, and we're doing this show not just because Buck is going through this situation, but if he can go through it and anyone who's watching could wind up being in a very similar situation with perhaps some other disease, some other injury, some other reason that they know uh, something is available to help them, and to have non-medical people make a decision that they are going to manipulate the market, they're going to determine how much it costs you, rather than supply and demand, uh, there is no one, there is no one who would want this to happen to them. That's what we deal with in fundamental human rights. We cannot be an honorable society, an honorable people, an honorable nation if we allow this to go on. Buck, you wanted to add something? Yeah, I wanted to add something. When I went down there and met with the senators, some of the first questions they asked was, well, what are you going to do? You're going to blow this in their mouth? How are you going to light a joint and blow the smoke in their face? Or how to, And everybody is... They, none of the, the, the uh, <laughs> our legal representatives, our politicians, even knew about any of that. And the governor himself came out and said, I've got the answer. We're going to take all the pot we take in drug raids and give it to your kids. Problem solved. He right. really said that on TV. Right. That shows you how bright and brilliant he is. And he wants to be in control of this. Come on. Get somebody in. in <laughs> he shouldn't be involved in this. Right. All, the only thing he, he might be able to be involved is to make sure it's not abused. But as far as, uh, and then that's easy enough to do. Yeah. And the, the access, um, he denied those three kids a chance to, tr we, they pleaded for a chance to try this, and now they're gone. And they never had the opportunity to even try it. It's like, how can you be that heartless and cruel when, and I know he said, well, that uh, 
if I gave let one person supply it, then the other ones would sue us because they weren't the ones to supply it. And my answer was, throw their names in a hat and pick one. Too bad. And now these kids can be helped, and then the rest of you can join in after you work out the rest of the details. But it's not that hard. It's not rocket science. Well, and, and you're using my favorite expression because many of these things are made to look like they're very complicated. But every single person knows if they knew that something was available, if it was their child, most people would go to almost any length. And we know that in some locations, there have been people who have supposedly stepped outside uh, the legal boundaries in order to obtain some of this uh, product so they could help their child. And we understand that arrests have been made. You know, a society that arrests people for helping others, and you know that we've done segments on the gun issue, and we run into the same thing there. People who are the types of people who would come to other people's aid, and yet we have government officials who are causing them to be arrested. So very similarly, you know, when we're dealing with these medical issues, we've asked the question, you know, is your health a fundamental human right? You know that we, at Honorable People, Honorable Nation, we believe that that is a right of yours. And we believe that every single person who is watching this would agree if they were the people who needed these types of products for their particular needs, especially if it was a young person and someone that they loved. We only have a couple more seconds here. Buck, did do you want to? Did you play the video? To sh so we they did could, play it. Oh, yes. you did play it yeah. so they could see what the, he went through. Yeah. Anybody that can see that, especially the politicians. Now, to be fair, when I was down there, when the politicians saw him seize, they were saying something's got to be done. Unfortunately, the, fi the final authority and power is not in their hands. You know whose hands it's in? We the people. You know, it's on our hands. This is Dan Dublin for the Detective Dan Dublin Show. Honorable people, honorable nation, it's up to you. We can make the difference. God bless you all. I didn't have a chance in our last segment to thank Buck Williams for being our guest. If you watched the clip of his son going through the seizures that he goes through, I can't imagine that there's a heart out there that wasn't saddened and touched by what this young man has to go through. Buck is most, one of the most positive people that I know. He's dealing with the condition with his son, and now he has what's referred to as medical marijuana available to him. But the price is outrageous. We talked about it earlier on but I wanted to let you know you really are very important in trying to help not only Tommy, but all the individuals who are going through these kinds of situations who could be helped by this drug. And I want you to know that we think because we have the term marijuana, we think of somebody smoking some what's called weed in order to become high. This is not what this is about. This is about a medication that can help these individuals, especially these young people, have a better life and stop having many, maybe all of the seizures and actually prolong their life. Buck has mentioned that some of the young people who have been administered this oil really is what it is 
and in some cases at least it's taken orally. So it's just an oil that's put on the tongue and with that medication they're able to go from being in a wheelchair to being able to get up and walk around. If you haven't watched the movie uh, Lorenzo's Oil, it's a similar situation in that you know, family members had to fight the medical community and the politicians in order to get what they knew would work to help their kids. None of us would want to have to go through that when we need to address the needs of our own child. And so I want you to take this seriously and understand that you could help change the tide for these individuals. I can find no reason, and if anybody from the government, you know, anyone from the governor's office can justify the expense that these people are going to have to go through. Buck mentioned $2,000 it could cost him a month. And insurance doesn't cover that. So when he can get it from Colorado, and they can do that safely for anywhere from $75 to a couple hundred dollars a month instead of $2,000 a month, is there anyone out there? Is there anyone who would say, no, I'd rather pay the $2,000? You know, these people have massive expenses anyway. But you're the key to this, and I want you to see this and treat them as yourself. If this was you in this situation, you know what you would want. And that's what we appeal to when we're talking about honorable people and an honorable nation. Much of what happens really is up to you, because the more people who would stand up and say, we want answers, why is this so expensive for people absolutely uh, can improve their lives and that's not to say it's going to work for everyone they have an 85 percent success rate but the opportunity to try and see if that works for them and then if it does work then they have to stay on that medication no one wants that kind of expense so I'm appealing to you because you're really the reason that we do this show. You know, the people who are working on these shows, we could go be doing many other things that we'd rather do. But we know that we have a responsibility to other people just the way we want them to recognize that we need certain things ourselves. So we're in this boat together. But I need you to pick up the oars and to paddle in order to help make this happen. So I'm counting on you. Contact us. You can reach us at info at fundamentalhumanrights.org. You know, put the name Buck Williams, B-U-C Williams, W-I-L-L-I-A-M-S. Uh, if you want to put that in the, the title, you know, or just put Buck's first name in there, we'll know what it's in regard to, or even Tommy's name because it's really about his right to have decent health when there are means available to do it. God bless you all. Uh, I appreciate you watching, but I'm going to appreciate more when you actually take some action in order to help make sure that we can clear up the situation that is hideous as far as I'm concerned. God bless you all. Have a good day.